Many new chess players like playing the Italian opening or the Spanish opening because it's quite straightforward. You occupy the center, you develop your knight, you develop your bishop, you castle, and you have a nice game. It's a small plus for white, it's playing in the top level, it's a comfortable advantage. However, many of those Italian players make a very serious mistake in the opening. And in today's video I'm going to teach you how to punish that as black and have an advantage yourself. So as I said at the beginning, or as I said just like 5 seconds ago, we're going to look at this from black's perspective. So white plays e4, e5, knight of 3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian, as we kind of already agreed on. Bishop b5 is the Spanish, the Rui Lopez. We're not going to talk about this today. Maybe in another video, let me know in the comments. But bishop c4. And let's say black plays knight f6. Bishop c5 is a common way to play this as black, to prevent knight g5, which is a very serious move. But okay, knight f6. And in this position, as I mentioned just now, knight g5 is a way to play. You can play d3, you can play c3, you can play castles. But in this position, many new chess players make the mistake of playing knight c3. And um, it's kind of hard to believe this is a mistake. It's following the opening principles. You have to develop your minor pieces at the beginning, in the opening. You have to develop them towards the center. So what, what, what could be wrong with this move? And this is what many people kind of struggle with chess, and that's that um, these principles serve as a guide. They're not general rules. You can't follow them dogmatically. You have to be pragmatic. You have to know when to follow principles and when to break the rules. So the more you know in chess, the more you know when to break principles, right? In this position, the reason why this is a mistake is actually very concrete, very straightforward. If you want to try to punish this for, by yourself, pause the video. The move that black has to make in order to equalize and actually get a slight plus already is knight takes e4. This is a minor piece sacrifice because white, of course, could take the knight. You will play d5, and we're going to talk about that very, very soon. But what happens if bishop takes f7? This is what many people would be scared of when getting into this line. Oh no, my king is out. I have lost rights to castle my king. This is nothing to worry about. Black is absolutely fine. After knight takes e4, you play d5. Already here, you notice that black has all the center. And even though you have to deal with a check, it's nothing to worry about. King g8. And what is white going to do? White cannot make the most of your weak king. Not only that, you're going to push this knight very soon with h6. And for example, let's say white castles, you play h6. Bishop g4, you pin this knight. It's an absolute nightmare for white. This knight cannot get for white. This knight cannot get into the game. You're going to play king h7, bishop d6, rook f8. You're going to manually castle as black. This is an advantage. So, black... Oh, sorry, white has to play knight takes e4, so you play d5, if not, you would be sacrificing a knight for nothing. And in this position, once again, we kind of divide into three different uh, lines. Knight, bishop takes b5, bishop d3, and bishop, let's do it with blue, bishop b5. Bishop takes d5, you just take. Knight c3, you play queen d6, strong move. And you have the center, you have the bishop pair, after something like this... You have a nice position as black. You have a small advantage. Once again, you have succeeded in the opening. If white plays bishop d3, you take the knight. You play bishop d6. You castle. Once again, black is up in development. Bishop g4 is coming. White still has to kind of sort it, sort this out. It's not the worst for white either. But once again, I mean, where are your pieces? Bishop on e4 is not nice. It's not comfortable there. It's going to get pushed by f5, maybe. In fact, one of the main lines after rook e1 is something like knight b4, threatening f5. Bishop g4 is kind of more natural, or rook e8. As I said, this is nothing that you're kind of winning right away as black. You just have a small advantage. And as white, this is kind of a nightmare, a, a failure. If you're white, you want to have a small plus. So that's not the most challenging. The most challenging that white can play, and what you must know, is that after bishop b5, you are winning after this, this, and not queen b5. By the way, there's no other moves white can play. This is quite forced. There, these are the only moves. If white goes knight g1, this is horrible. You just play queen g5 either way. Which already spoils the move, because after knight takes g5, putting pressure on the knight on c6, many people go queen d5 to protect. But that's not necessary. In fact, 
that's already spoiling a little bit of the advantage. You have to go queen g5, attacking the knight and attacking the pawn. So it's a fork and white is worse. This is a big advantage for black already. For example, let's say you play d4 as black. This is the, the main line. You take on g2, rook f1, and here you play the very strong bishop d6. The reason why you play bishop d6 is because you have nothing to fear about after knight takes e6. By the way, bishop takes e6, nothing to worry about. You just take back. The light squares for white are very weak. And guess what? You have a light squared bishop. So you're going to play bishop a6 or take on e5 and play bishop g4. You're up in development. White's king is more exposed than yours because it cannot castle anytime soon. Yours is going to castle soon. You have an, an enormous advantage. And the thing that you have to remember very, very clearly is that after knight takes c6, you always have a6. Don't take here because you're going to lose. But you always have a6. And the reason why you have a6 is because after something like bishop a4, you just play bishop d7. You're getting back the, the minor piece, whatever white plays. You can't save this knight and you're threatening to take on c6. So if I turn on the engine in this position, it's minus 1.5. So that's d4. Already d4, an active looking move, nothing. Doesn't work. What happens if white tries knight takes e6? In this position, you don't take the knight once again. You take the bishop. And after knight d4, this is very nice. You go back. And white is in trouble. Because if white goes g3, you play bishop h3. Good luck castling for white. If white castles, well, okay, you did castle, but you're going to have to give me the exchange. There's not, no other way of defending mate on g2 by the way and there's nothing white can do you're either going to lose g2 you're going to lose an exchange once again this is a big advantage for black not small big advantage and last but not least if bishop takes e6 you just take and once again you have to deal with this double attack black is better thank you very much for watching hope that was useful let me know if you get to use this trick it's actually not a trick it's just to punish objectively a mistake that white made um please subscribe give a like i would really appreciate it it would really fuel and support me so i can create more videos like this have a nice day